Hello, friends, and welcome to tonight's episode of Locked On Jets. Uh, the season is now over for Winnipeg, and the offseason begins. And don't you just love being a Jets fan? Something always to surprise you, maybe concern you. And uh, let's just say everything that happened at the end of the Seattle Kraken game, it's going to be a long, long episode. So strap in, get your popcorn, get your drinks. It's going to be a fun episode of Locked On Winnipeg Jets. Or Locked On the Hockey Jets, your daily podcast on the Winnipeg Jets. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hey, friends, thank you so much for making time out of your day to join us for Locked On Winnipeg Jets. Thanks for choosing to make Locked On Jets your first listen of the day every day. If you like what you're hearing, be sure to like, follow, and subscribe on your favorite podcasting platform of choice, including Apple, Spotify, Google, Megaphone, Odyssey, and as you can see from this footage, YouTube. We've got audio and video versions available of this podcast so that we're always on the platforms you want us on all day, every day. That is why we are the Locked On Podcast Network. Before we get started with tonight's episode, which is going to be a pretty jam-packed one, I uh, just wanted to say that today's episode is brought to you by Bet Bet BetOnline has you covered this season with more props, odds, and lines than ever before. Bet Online, It's where the game starts. We'll actually talk a little bit later in this episode about Bet Online. so if you have any questions, save them till then. You might have some answers, and maybe even find out if BetOnline.net is right for you. Now, like I said at the start of the episode... Um, didn't everyone tell you to become a Jets fan? Uh, it's going to be a fun time, right? You know, root for the Jets, root for Winnipeg. It's going to be a great experience. Um, yeah, well, this season might be one of the craziest Jets seasons we've seen in recent history. Uh, everything seems to be happening. Now, the, the Jets actually did have a couple of games over the weekend. We're going to focus on one in particular. Uh, the first one was against Calgary, but there wasn't really much to say. Um, the reason I'm not going to focus on this one because... Uh, you know, the Jets ended up winning, I think, like four to one or something like that. And Calgary itself, they weren't really pushing the pace. They weren't super interested in um, in putting on that much of a show. At this point, Calgary just wants to sort of make it through without injuries. So we're going to pretend that that game, it did happen, but we're not going to really focus on it. Um, the Kraken game was a little more interesting because uh, the Seattle game, um, the Kraken, I think, were kind of in a similar position to the Jets in that they're, you know, playing for pride, looking to make a bit of a statement. And uh, actually, I'd say they played pretty well. Uh, in terms of really wide open, fun hockey, this was the kind of game that you got. Um, very high event. Uh, not exactly great defending from either team. The slots were completely wide open for both squads to attack pretty frequently. Uh, you know, the Jets obviously ended up benefiting more from it just because look at Winnipeg's finishers. I mean, we have some really great goal scorers. Now, I will say that there were some performances that I thought at least warrant a little bit of discussion. Um, Eric Comrie, I thought, did well enough, and I really don't understand why he didn't get to play the 30 games you would need for him to become a, a restricted free agent in the offseason. If he does go full UFA, um, which he is slated to this season uh, or this offseason, uh, I kind of wonder if he wants to stick around with the Jets. I, I do think that he could be in for a minor raise, but I don't know if anyone else would give it to him. So let's kind of hope that he wants to stay a Jet because, honestly, he looks like a really solid backup. I was impressed with him, and I thought uh, the, the changes in, in his mechanics, his composure, and his control really did seem to make a difference. So I was really happy for him. I've always hoped that at some point he would put two and two together because he's got all of the physical tools and traits that would make a really fun goalie. So, you know, congrats to Eric. He has busted his tail uh, more than many other goaltenders out there. Um, not to, to, you know, slander any work eth efforts here, but I think, you know, Comrie in particular has uh, done a lot to try and get to this point. So really happy for him. I'd also say that I thought Morgan Barron, again, showed that he does have a pretty good dose of skill. Um, you know, his goal tonight, he had a great uh, feed up, the, up into the slot area, but I think what it showcased was that he's very comfortable driving towards that central space in front of the goalkeeper. And he actually, you know, outmuscled a couple of skaters, got into the middle. And I think Jansen Harkins found him for a perfect, you know, cross seam pass 
Uh, and and Baron just sort of did the rest. I really feel like if you give Morgan skill to work with, um, he's got the size, he's got the strength, and he's got the hand-eye coordination to actually score some really nice goals. You know, you're not really expecting him to be a 30-goal scorer necessarily, but if you're looking for a guy who might reasonably contribute 25 to 30 points in your bottom six unit, I think Morgan might actually be very capable of that. Uh, you know, he's still working on the play driving ability, but also uh, when he's playing with some of the weaker guys on the team, if you look at his shot creation metrics and stuff, it's not super surprising that defensively, maybe some issues. Uh, you know, if you're playing with Harkins, Harkins tends to thrive alongside really high end skill, but, you know, away from that, he tends to have a few more issues in this game. So I feel like, you know, Baron might not be a Mark Shifley uh, player necessarily, but um, I think that they did well tonight in in pairing with each other and finding a couple of good scoring opportunities. Barron's not a guy who has like a really high-end game. I, I just think he does a lot of the details well enough to be, you know, really well-rounded and somebody that I think, you know, will be an every everyday contributor for the Jets, which um, given the return on the cop trade, I think that is the the best that you could really ask for. Uh, does he have, you know, more upside than that? I, I don't know. I think you would have to really experiment and see just how far you can push him in terms of the lineup. He's got a lot of really interesting tools, uh, and there are flashes that there's more there to him. It's just right now it's probably a little premature to say what his ceiling is. Um, I still think like a third liner is probably where he, you know, would most comfortably sit, but if he one day pushes into the top six alongside some really good skill and becomes kind of like his Vechnikov sort where he's just really good at being a complimentary player, I would be beyond thrilled. I think that that for me would be awesome. Um, and I think the Jets would be pretty thrilled with that too. That's kind of like the best case scenario. But, you know, even if he just pans out as maybe like a depth forward with some scoring upside, can you really be upset with that? I don't think so. I think that's actually pretty darn good. So, uh, let's hope that, you know, Morgan keeps on keeping on and that his performance uh, trends upward next season. That is kind of where the fun stuff uh, in terms of the positive news ends. Now is when we get into the really spicy stuff with the Jets, because in the hours after the end of this game and of the end of the season, ostensibly, uh, yeah, the Jets have kind of uh, caught on fire. We're going to talk about that and, and what exactly has been said coming up in just a little bit. But, you know, like I mentioned earlier in this episode, I do want to talk to you a little bit about BetOnline.net. I'm not personally a big online better, but, uh, you know, I've done it myself a couple of times. Uh, I'm in a fantasy hockey league, and I've actually used BetOnline.net before to bet on, you know, a brief Bundesliga match here and there. And like as somebody who doesn't know anything about online betting, they made it super easy, super convenient, and they explained everything. That's why BetOnline.net is your number one source for all of your betting stats and sports info. If you're looking for the latest sports developments, league reviews, news, uh, basketball playoff brackets, MLB news, um, hockey you know, game scores and stuff, whatever it is, BetOnline.net is your number one source for all of that. And they can also give you sporting wagering information, including live betting, playoff odds, esports, and so much more. If you're not into sports, no problem. They've also got, you know, pop culture and Vegas casino games. So whatever you're into, BetOnline is into that for you. To get started, go to BetOnline.net on your laptop or mobile device and be sure to check out all of the latest trends and action occurring in your favorite sports. BetOnline. It's where the game starts. Hello, friends, and welcome back to this episode of the Locked on Winnipeg Jets podcast. We are uh, continuing our discussion of... Um, what's been a pretty crazy last few hours for the Winnipeg Jets. Before we start to get into the spicy material, just wanted to say thanks again for making Locked On Jets your first listen of the day, every day. While you're at it, I would highly recommend that you also check out our Locked On Now program. It takes all of the hottest action from around the NHL and condenses it into, you know, 20 to 30 second snippets that gives you game recaps, um, you know, brief in-depth analysis from our local experts on the latest trades, rumors, whatever it is that's late breaking, we've got it right there for you at Locked On Now. It's free and available to subscribe to on all of your favorite podcasting platforms, just like our show. So check it out on YouTube, Odyssey, Megaphone, whatever it is. Give them a, uh, give them a nice little follow. They really appreciate the support, and so do I, because I actually do have uh, some stuff that pops up there. Now, the Jets, 
uh, and the end of the season. You know, this was, I, I think, something that's been building for a while. Um, increasingly, we've been getting signs that the team is, uh, at all levels, kind of stressed and upset. And I think the players have been getting more and more vocal. We've heard, you know, on and off guys like Paul Stastny allude to it. Uh, of course, we've had players who have wanted their way out, including Patrick Laine and Jack Roslovic, um, you know, due to internal disputes. And it was not always clear uh, where some of the disputes lie. But, wow, <laughs> I think we have a pretty darn good idea that the locker room is very much split. Now, I've been hearing rumors about it for years. Uh, so this stuff for me, it's not shocking necessarily, but I will say that it is... Uh, Maybe surprising to see how open it is. This is stuff that traditionally, you know, the Jets don't want out in the press. Winnipeg is one of those squads that only wants to be in the spotlight for fun reasons. When it comes to like skeletons in the closet or, uh, you know, maybe trouble at home, the Jets do a really good job of keeping that under wraps. And so for this to kind of get out there and, and really have players frankly, pissing and moaning in the press about one another is probably really embarrassing for the Jets. I would imagine, you know, there is a PR firestorm that's, you know, going on in the background. And I'm sure that the Jets PR people are just, they're probably losing it right now. So, uh, you know, hopefully they, they get some sleep and shut eye because I think the next couple of weeks are going to be super crazy for this team. What has gotten everyone uh, in a frenzy? Well, it kind of started off with Mark Shifley's comments. Um, Mark was asked about, you know, what he thought about the trade speculation and stuff. And for the first time ever, Mark basically said he wants to talk to his agent. He wants to talk to the team and have a conversation about his future. Uh, this is a guy who's, you know, signed for a couple of more years, by the way. And Shifley is talking about asking, you know, for some kind of a change in, in in the direction of himself and of the team. We have not really seen this before. Um, and I would say it's, it's surprising in some ways, but also for me overdue. I think the speculation around Shifley, uh, especially this off or like during the season was really building towards some kind of a confrontation when there were rumors um, on like Elliot Friedman's podcast or whatever that the jets were listening this, for me, was something that the team was explicitly putting out there through, uh, uh, you know, its its informants and stuff to kind of leak to the press. Um, Winnipeg never does this stuff publicly unless they're actually interested in gauging the reaction from the players, from the fans, and from other teams. And so I think Shifley was kind of like, you know what? Screw it. I'm going to say something. I feel like the team hasn't been going in, in the direction that I feel is most appropriate. And so it, it actually, you know, sparked a bit of a firestorm on Twitter because a lot of people are like, well, just get Shifley out. You know, he's a bit of a locker room cancer. He doesn't track back. You know, he's he's not as good as he used to be. And I don't disagree with some of those assessments. I, I've been uh, hard on him before myself because I feel like we all know what he can be and that he is a phenomenally talented, amazingly skilled and still super effective player. It's just, you know, can you get that commitment from him? But on the other hand, he's got a point, and I feel like it's hard to blame him if he wants a change of scenery, because what have the Jets realistically done in the past several years? Not a lot. You know, they haven't changed course in a way that I think is meaningful. And so for Shifley to express frustration very publicly, um, I think it's maybe, I wouldn't say it's a good thing, right? I don't think it's a sign of a healthy situation, but I do think it could lead to better things down the road. Uh, if your you know, star talent is asking for some kind of a transition process or a change in which he feels that the future is on a better trajectory, I think that could be you know, the impetus for the team to make some really big reforms. And that's kind of what the Jets need. I think Winnipeg has to be honest with itself, assess where the squad is, and understand that you know, for the past several years, they have very much underperformed. And that's not a secret. Um, I know that there are some diehards out there who would probably say things are fine, just stay the course. But anyone with common sense and anyone who has uh, an understanding of historical precedent and ultimately the very short window that you have to compete knows that every season that you struggle and waste away is just, you know, one more nail in the coffin 
on the core years of uh, a, a, a great group of players. So, yeah, Shifley's comments alone would have been crazy, right? But then we got even juicier stuff coming from guys like Paul Stastny. And folks, you're going to want to hear about this commentary and, and ultimately some of the other news that is currently uh, on the verge of being broken. We'll talk about those rumors and speculation in just a little bit. But again, before we get into the, the really crazy stuff, just wanted to shout out the wonderful folks at Built Bar. If you have uh, heard me talk about Built Bar before, you know that I really love them. I don't love many protein bars, but I love Built Bar. And the reason is, it's not like a normal protein bar. It's more like a candy bar with a 100% real chocolate exterior and a soft, chewy interior. Again, I really have to stress it is like a candy bar, but it's one that you don't have to feel bad about. You know, one of the biggest things with them is that they're super healthy for you, with most Built Bars clocking in at around 130 calories, 4 grams of sugar, 4 net carbs, and 17 grams of protein. So they're perfect for every lifestyle, whether you're looking for a quick snack on the go, something before you work out, or, you know, if you're on one of those summer trips, you know, you got to throw something in your kids' backpacks. Why not turn to Built Bars instead of the usual uh, really sugary, sugary candy bars? But you might be saying, well, healthy stuff can't taste good, right? That's where you'd be super, super wrong. I've actually had a number of different Bilt Bar flavors. I've had stuff like, you know, Churro Puff, which was awesome, I have to say. Um, they've got like great marshmallow filling that are just to die for. But, you know, sometimes you might want something a little more basic. And I think the Raspberry Dark Chocolate for me is one of my personal favorites. Very simple, very straight to the point, delicious. You seriously can't go wrong. And you can also check out a bunch of other flavors like banana cream pie. They've got um, double chocolate. Uh, there's an almond, coconut almond, whatever whatever it is you're into, be sure to check it out. You can also get their variety box, which comes with like 12 different flavors. So you don't have to choose just one. You can pick a new favorite from the selection and see if there's something from Bill Bar's catalog that you need to have right now. To get yeah, your, your personal mix box or your favorite flavor, go to Built.com and use promo code LOCKED15 at checkout to get 15% off your order. Again, that is promo code LOCKED15 at checkout for 15% off at Built.com. Hello, friends, and welcome back to these closing thoughts on tonight's episode of Locked On Winnipeg Jets. Uh, you know, like we said, it's been a crazy 48 hours for the Jets. Uh, and I, I think from here, it's only going to get crazier. Um, we had Mark Shifley's comments about asking, you know, the team for the direction that it wants to go in. And, you know, Paul Stastny kind of said something else that I think really caught people off guard. Uh, Wheeler was asked a question about how the team composition was and the the lack of a tactical approach and whether the, whether the Jets actually had a tactical approach or not. And he was going to answer, but then Paul Stastny kind of cut him off and then started saying something about, you know, not just a tactical approach, but can you really trust the guy next to you? Do you have faith in your teammates? Um, if you don't have tactics, do you even have trust that your teammates are going to give their all and that they're going to fight for the badge, basically, which, wow. Uh, <laughs> if you're a Jets fan, this is probably the spiciest, most insane explosion we've seen since the Evander Kane scandal. Um, anyone who's really been paying attention to the team, though, uh, especially at like an intimate level, probably knows this was going to happen sooner or later. The rumors have been swirling for years about the leadership struggles, uh, the locker room personalities. Um, and so none of this, I think, is actually super shocking. Uh, you might be shocked if you're a more casual observer or you just hadn't heard the rumors. But to be honest, I think Winnipeg was always heading towards this point where, you know, the guys were going to start pointing fingers um, and I think the fractures have only really split. They say that when you're winning, you can, you know, heal a lot of wounds, but the Jets haven't been winning much at all, have they? So everything that the, the players have been feeling that's been building up and all of that anger and, and tension and stress is sort of blowing up in everyone's faces. And so for, for Winnipeg, this is like a huge crisis point, which uh, I'm sure the team has probably been expecting for a while, but just kind of wanted to uh, kick the can down the road and hope for the best. Now that's not really the case. They're going to have to confront it in in the face and, and uh, try and work around it because you've got a lot of really disgruntled employees and that cannot be a fun workplace. 
things might get even more stressful now that uh, it sounds like Kevin Shoveldayoff is going to be back for what could be three years. Now, uh, I've heard a lot of interesting things about the front office and how it's run and, you know, where Chevy's place in the organization really is. So for me, this is a bit of a litmus test. Is Chevy going to have the control that he's always wanted or is he still going to be hamstrung? And is this, you know, a situation where the the front office is still going to be split in decision making and the direction? Or if they are about to extend Chevy long term, does he have the the handle that he wants to really shape this team and take it in a very different direction? I honestly have no idea. I can't really speak to what's going on with the Jets right now. All I can say is I am very intrigued and I hope that the Jets make the right decisions as they begin to uh, approach this offseason. Um, <laughs> I, don't, I don't even know what to say. I mean, it's been such a crazy uh, sequence of events that honestly I'm trying to, to figure out the best way to word it. But yeah, I, I uh, if you love drama, I mean, this is a really exciting time. Forget the playoffs. I mean, Winnipeg is about to be its own like four part stage play or something. I don't know. Uh, I'd be curious to know your thoughts on all of this, uh, whether you're happy about the changes, I'm concerned about the drama. Be sure to let me know at HL Living Loco and at LO underscore Winnipeg Jets. Tell me if you were expecting this or if this is a complete surprise to you and you had no idea this was all about to come to a head. Now, uh, for tonight's episode, that actually is going to be all that we're going to discuss. I want to wait till Shovel Day Off's extension is formalized before I kind of go into how I feel about this and, and sort of uh, what I expect to happen. just want to make sure that it's really set in stone and that we have a good, clear idea of what his role is before we start diving into the nitty-gritty details. But again, for tonight's episode, that is going to be all the time that we have. Thank you so much for making Locked On Jets your first listen of the day, every day. Now make your second listen Locked On NHL. From first-round matchups to each Stanley Cup kiss, Locked On NHL covers the playoffs like no other. Hear the latest news and opinions from local experts every Monday through Friday. It's free and available wherever you listen to your favorite podcasts. So like, follow, and subscribe right now. And as always, thank you so much for listening. Have a great night, and go Jets go!